Welcome to another edition of LR Mania Reviews. Today I'm going to be reviewing two shows off the WWE Network. The first one will be WWE 24, Episode 6, Thank You Daniel. And then the second will be a review of NXT TakeOver Unstoppable. So two reviews here. Um, and watching Thank You Daniel, having seen this documentary before, it was very sad. Uh, Daniel Bryan retiring, very memorable moment. I think that segment was one of the greatest segments I've ever seen in the history of Raw. And I'm not lying, um, it was just incredible. I don't remember anything that happened on Raw that night in particular, but I remember it was in Seattle and Daniel Bryan was announcing his retirement and it had been a very long year, basically close to a year, nine months. He had a concussion in uh, May of 2015, and uh, it looked like his, uh, he was going to get cleared, and then he wouldn't get cleared, and be month after month after month, is this guy getting cleared? Is this guy getting cleared? Some of us even thought of a, <clears throat> um, a conspiracy that maybe W intentionally doesn't want him to get cleared because they know he's very over, and then it'll mess up what Roman Reigns' is WrestleMania push. And it went on for a very long time. And finally, February of 2016, in Seattle, his home, not his hometown, but his home state, he announces his retirement from the WWE. And a uh, very, very sad segment. In my opinion, one of the most, one of the greatest segments in Raw history. Um, just incredible. Um, very sad. Just, it was just, uh, yeah, you know, thank you, Daniel. The only thing you could really say. And uh, I just thought the show, um, it was just an excellent, you know, it was, I mean, it was an excellent, it was our time, just the way it was done and the way he talked, the crowd, it was very memorable. And, uh, yeah, I am, uh, I'm really enjoying the documentary, and uh, it was probably, arguably the best 24 day ever, maybe even better than WrestleMania 31, maybe this one, this was just really, really good. Another part I love was the Mark Henry part. Uh, he's talking to Mark Henry and in, uh, in backstage before the show, and he's uh, telling him, I keep getting all these tweets to pull a Mark Henry. And if you don't know, Mark Henry, reti- fake retirement, he attacked John Cena. It was an awesome segment. I just uh, I thought that was really cool seeing him interact with Mark Henry. That was uh, I thought that was really really a good part of the documentary. Of course, they talk about WrestleMania 30 and how it's the highest accomplishment anyone can get. Just still an awesome moment. Of course, they show a lot with Connor. Very sad. Um, him, you know, winning the, the main event WrestleMania is one of my favorite wrestling moments of all time. That show, I still think, is such an iconic WrestleMania, and seeing him win the belt was just awesome. And I remember thinking t- to myself, and he was retiring, I'm just really happy at least he has that moment. I mean, whatever happened, he had a great career there, even though he wasn't there for very long. Just not, at least he has that moment. I mean, that's always something. It's I think that's easier, in a way, he can say he did it. The most, I mean... There's nothing bigger in wrestling than main eventing and winning the main event of WrestleMania. And he did it at WrestleMania 30. It was a landmark show, and there's nothing more powerful, bigger, bigger honor you can really get. What else? What would be bigger? Nothing. I mean, winning the belt WrestleMania in 30, the 30th anniversary. I mean, what else can you ask for? And uh, it was really great. You know, he, I'm so happy for at least he got that moment when he was retiring. I remember thinking to myself, man, I'm sure the company's relieved they gave him that moment. Because if he hadn't retired and they actually had him lose to Sheamus at WrestleMania 30 and Randy Orton Batista made of it and France just hijacked that show, I mean, they made the right decision. Yeah, I mean, they talk about his father passing after he got married. And I mean, the one thing he kept talking about was like how it was the best two weeks of his life, followed by the worst. He wins the at WrestleMania 30, gets married to Brie. Goes on honeymoon, then after that, you know, his father passes away, which is, I feel really bad when that happened to him, and then his, uh, Connor, he was close with, Connor, uh, passed away the Wednesday, and it was just, and this must have really just been the all, you know, tailspin of emotions, to say the least. Um, they show him talking to Dr. Christopher Amon. If you don't know, that's the guy, that's the Dr. CM Punk trashed in the podcast at the Colt Cabana, so, hmm, must be, uh, a little awkward for him to be, you know, on this uh, documentary, because Punk accused him of not being safe. So it's uh, very interesting. So they go through his uh, neurological uh, neurological testing. 
Uh, Joseph Maroon, who's uh, the doctor of the Pittsburgh Steelers, he wouldn't clear him. And um, the story is he kept going to doctor, to doctor, to doctor, clearing him, clearing him. And then, of course, Joe Maroon, who's also the WWE doctor, would not clear him. So what happened was he eventually he had to, uh, he went to a, a New York uh, school who uh, studies neurological problems and they found out that he has problems with his brain and uh, eventually he made the decision to retire. Yeah, that was probably one of the most emotional segments in the history of Raw, arguably D, other than like a wrestler passing away. But uh, yeah, I just had a really sad uh, moment to it. Then in the end, you know, he actually, um, after he left, he bawled, you know, and Gorilla cried and, uh, you know, Brie consoled him, you know. Uh, it was very sad. I have to say, this is by far the best WWE 24 I've ever seen. I, This is easily the best one. This is just incredible. Um, um, yeah, that was absolutely incredible. Just, I think that's the best documentary WWE has ever produced by far. That was just absolutely fantastic. Just that was I can't even tell you how great that was that was just incredible so yeah all I can say after this is thank you Daniel for his WWE moments and whether or not he wrestles again there's a chance he does if he doesn't then thank you for all the great memories he's provided us now let's talk about NXT TakeOver Unstoppable so the show starts off to have this big entrance for Tyler Breeze and they Hideo Tommy actually tore his rotator cuff for real and he was out for a while after this. They tried to make it into an angle, but you know it was what it was. Very unfortunate for Tommy. Finn Balor had just an amazing entrance. I like how both of them had big entrances, but Finn's this was probably one of his best. He comes out with his bat cape, kind of not a Batman cape, but like a bat webbing cape, and then like he has like a. Uh, bones like spine bones like sticking out that was just such so awesome i thought that was one of the coolest things and then he has just a giant entrance and they give breeze the entrance with all the like the spring break so it's really cool how both of them come off a but big entrance makes him both seem like big deal that match was really good and they had finn Balor jump off the intron which was badass they did it in the opening match this was really really good really strong way to start off the show finn Balor's awesome he's the man uh this was just really good. Last part of the match, you know. I was surprised he did a spot that early in the show, but, um, you know, they did. And uh, I really, really liked that match. So they have Charlotte and uh, Bailey against Dana Brooke and Emma. They sent Emma back to NXT for a while because she was a complete bust on the main roster, even though I, I like her. But they put her with Dana Brooke, and Dana Brooke was doing good with Emma. And Dana Brooke is just awful. She's the worst right now. She's the worst woman's wrestler on the main roster, in my opinion. But she had some momentum with Emma, and they were against Charlotte and Bailey. It was something for Charlotte and Bailey to do to be on the show, and um, they had they had, a, you know, it was a it wasn't a memorable tag match. But it was what it was. I mean, the main focus was Sasha and Becky. They had Corey Graves actually said, you know, Emma. He made a joke about Emma stealing something. If you don't know, Emma was arrested a few years ago for shoplifting. That was just really a douchebag thing for Corey Graves to say. Maybe he had slipped. Yeah, Not anything much to say there. So the show's pretty good, um, pretty decent match with the woman. Up next is um, it's Corbin and Rhino, and I'm really not looking forward to that. I think Corbin sucks. He's really clunky in the ring, never been a fan of the guy. They're trying to push him. I mean, he's improved from where he was at this point in SmackDown. He's not you know, the worst guy, but here he really sucks. He's really clunky. Nothing much. It match it picked up at the end, but fans really hate Corbin there. Next is the tag team title match. And Zoe and Cass come out. These guys are so over. And I like Carmella with them. I think they should have kept Carmella with them. I think she can help them right now since they're not over anymore. But uh, I, I really enjoyed their characters. I think Blake and Murphy absolutely suck. They're not too bad in the ring, but I think their gimmick just sucks. And they're, they're nothing. They're both going to get released. And they're, they're bums. The match is pretty decent. Nothing special. It's, it's okay. It's uh, just, you know, you really think Enzo and Cash probably should win. They're super over and they never gave him the tag team titles. They don't need the belts because they're not, they're not you know, built as a superstar team, but they're a very over team. They're, it's like the Outlaws. The Outlaws were champs. They didn't really need the belts. But, um, you know, I think uh, Blake and Murphy just sucked. Uh, Blake and Murphy, they got a blessing with Alexa Bliss. She saved them. She made that tag team and, uh, one thing I noticed, I think Alexa Bliss is probably the best-looking woman on the roster, and 
she uh this is when she really starts to come into her own before that i saw her as someone who's very attractive you know she had a really nice look very small very like she's only five feet tall but this whole run of blake and murphy this set her up big and no one was expecting her to have this success she wasn't the four horse woman. she wasn't charlotte or bailey or sasha or becky but she ended up coming in and having so much success, which has been really surprising. She's been one of the, the pleasant surprises of the NXT draft. She's one of those players or uh, those you know workers who come up and just out of nowhere, she's become a very popular star. And I really like her. And um, it's really nice to see how her progression started. And she wasn't really anything before that. She was a sparkling girl. But then after this, this run set her up for big things. And I think she's going to be a big superstar for a long time i think she her and a lot of these girls and the four horse woman or she's going to be a she's definitely going to be a big star in the main roster speaking of stars there's another big female star it's sasha Banks. she was against becky lynch here and uh this match was just great and i think this was a no, sasha was already a big star people are knowing that she's gonna be special but this was a breakout match also for becky this showed becky's really really good and she was overlooked I have to say, looking at this video package, they need to let Sasha turn heel. Sasha is so good as a heel. She's so good as an arrogant heel. The problem was, she was so good. She's so, she's obviously very hot, but she was so good at it. You now, the fans cheered for her, and she just got so over because of it. But she's really, really good as a heel. And this was, again, a breakout match for Becky. Sasha Banks just comes off as such a superstar, and, and they better turn her heel because she, she even now, I think she, her character is a bit still. She's going to be something big, I can tell. Um, this match is just great. They just had a great match. Great, great match. Awesome. And uh, Sasha is really great in the ring, and this match was excellent. Um, just all these women they just they had this period where they would just tear the host down every single night and they stole the show here this was match of night without question in my opinion and again i wasn't expecting this i was going into it sasha is good and becky didn't know too much about i mean kevin and Sami Zayn are gonna have the best match and you had balor and um breeze that'll probably be really good and these two they had the match of the night without question on this show uh, not to mention one thing I was thinking of in the promo to have Becky stole the Conor McGregor line. We're not here to take part of t- We're here to take over. Um, that was pretty good. But, uh, yeah, again, this match was great. Now let's go on to the main event, uh, Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn. We all knew going into this match, Sami Zayn blew his shoulder out against John Cena. So he was not 100%. And they ended up having a really good match still. No. Uh, sorry about that. Um, the match, again, it was good. Sami Zayn was not healthy. I think they did the best they could. And, I mean, it was really fast-paced. It was only about close to under 15 minutes. They Okay, they did the best they could. And, um, I mean, you would expect these two. They didn't have that great match in NXT that they should have had. When Kevin Owens turned on him at Our Revolution, you thought they were going to have a series of classics. They never did. And the rivalry was never into that. Then, of course, on the main roster, they had some great matches. Um, they had one, I think, last year in Owens one. They had another one in the summer, Sami Zayn one. And they've had countless good matches on Raw. But um, they've never had that classic match that you know, they're capable of having in NXT. And I think that was um, that was kind of disappointing. And overall, this was not a great takeover. It was a good show, a good takeover. But of all the takeovers that came before us, I'd probably say this was the weakest one. I mean, there's been takeovers that have happened that I think were worse. But, I mean, of all the takeovers previously, if you were ranked the six ones I've reviewed so far, I think this would be six. I'd rank this six, probably, maybe, actually, Fatal 4 way six, this fifth. Um, then I think I'd probably rank uh, Rival fourth, the takeover third, then... Rival two and by without question our evolutions one but uh this was a good show but not a great show and of course the the big ending the biggest pop of the night the f- part where the fans were absolutely nuts Samoa Joe comes in confronts Kevin Owens that was awesome Samoa Joe is great and I think they signed him past his prime but that was a really really cool moment seeing Samoa Joe come out at the end of NXT uh, take over Unstoppable so overall Unstoppable good show but not on the level of the previous nxts 
But um, that says a lot, the, how high the level was. But still a show that I would say it's worth watching, and it was great to see Samoa Joe debut.